Alright, hi and welcome to another lesson for language development. So in the last lesson we started talking about phonetic variables. In this lesson we're going to finish by talking about a slightly more complicated variable which is called the formant frequency. So we're going to talk about formant frequencies in, in this second part of this lesson. Um, and formant frequencies are most important when we're talking about um, recognizing different vowel sounds. Um, so a vowel is any sound that you make by shaping but not obstructing your airway. So um, what I mean by this is that one vowel might have this kind of airway shape and one might have this kind of airway shape. Um, but in neither of them do you have anything standing in the way of the sound, right? So you can yell down both those tunnels. And if you imagine that you're yelling down tunnels of those two different shapes, um, it, would it would produce a different sort of echo, right? So even if you yell the same yop down one end of the tunnel or, you know, down, down the end of each of these two tunnels, it's going to come out sounding differently and it's going to echo around differently. And that's how you make different vowels. We'll talk about this more um, in uh, once we start talking about making vowel sounds rather than hearing vowel sounds. But this is what's going on when you're making vowel sounds. Um, uh, now, when you make a vowel sound, um, we have a different way that we usually visualize uh, this information. So before we saw waveforms, right? So we saw that you can, you can record how loud the sound is at a given moment. Um, what we have here are called spectrograms, spectrograms. And, um, and this is another way to visualize sound. So what this does is instead of showing a wave getting bigger when it's louder, it shows something getting darker when it's louder, right? So, so louder frequencies are louder. And these, um, this illustrates which frequencies, so which pitches within a sound are, are louder at a given moment, right? So each of these lines is a given moment, right? And this tells you which frequencies are the loudest, right? So dark is loud, um, up and down tells you how high pitched a sound is, right? Um, now notice that each of these sounds has lots of different frequencies in it, right? This is the case whenever you, you know, do a non-digitally produced sound basically, right? So you can digitally produce sounds that really have only one frequency, right? And those sort of sound like ooh or something like that, right? But anything that sounds like speech has a lot of different frequencies in it. It's layered, it's complicated sound, right? Um, as you can see, so this is the sound um, that you produce when you make the vowel E in English. The English vowel E. You, this is sort of what it sounds like, right? So you can see that you have concentrations sort of of different pitches within that, right? So you've got all the different pitches are there, but there are louder portions throughout this. And these little loud portions, right, which we can identify, there's three of them. Are called formants. Which basically just means they're little structures within the sound, right? And here's some more formants. This is the sound ah, right? So this is e and ah contrasted with each other. Now notice that the formants are in different places for these different vowels, right? Um, so a child is able to hear these different frequencies going and say, oh, this is where the formants are for e and this is where the formants are for ah. Now in reality, the most important two formants, the two that you actually use to identify which vowel you're hearing most of the time, um, are these two, the bottom two. So this top one can be used to do things like identify who's speaking because that will change um, based on who's speaking. They can be used um, for sort of, um, they, they can help you identify how that person's feeling, things like that, right? But this is not really used to tell the difference between E and A as much. So we're not going to pay as much attention to this, although children are paying attention to this because it still matters for understanding speech to know who's talking and how they're feeling, right? But um, when we're trying to distinguish E and A, we pay attention to the bottom two. And we call the bottom two formants F1. Formant 1 is the bottom one. And F2 is the top one, right? So here we have F1 and F2, right? Um, and a child will be listening to hear, um, you know, where are the clumps 
where the formants seem to clump together. And they're going to take a bunch of statistics based on these. So um, one of the things that a child will do is say, ooh, look, we have a clump of sounds where the formants on, on the F2 are sort of 2,500 hertz, and the formants on the F1 are sort of a little like 250 hertz, somewhere in there. We have a clump of sounds like that. Let's label these E. And we have another clump over here where the F2 is quite low. Um, but the F F1 is also quite low. And let's call those ooh, right? And here we have one over here. Let's call that ah. And let's call this one ah. And let's call this one aw. Ah. And let's call this one oh. Oh, no, this one's uh. Sorry. Uh. And let's call this one eh. And we can call this one a. I know, I guess this one's eh. Right, and so they, a child will will realize that there are sort of clumps of sounds where we're producing the same formants. Right, so that person just made that ah one again, that, that has these two formants in these areas. Right, um, but a child also has to figure out: Do I want to distinguish between ah and ah, ah and ah? Many of you might not even be able to hear that difference. Right, so I have learned that it's important to distinguish between ah and ah, because that's part of my dialect. Other people don't distinguish between those two vowels, right? So this is the type of thing that, that children are learning. Now, as it happens, when you start looking at English vowels, you are now able to chart the two formants that are most important um, in this way, right? So for the vowel E, we have one formant at, at 280 hertz and one at 200, 200, 2,250 hertz, um, and, and they go in different directions, right? So this first formant will move up and down, and the second formant mostly moves down, right? Um, and, and this gets you the combination of all the different vowels that you have to learn in English, a combination we will go over in subsequent classes, right? So what are the things that um, we now are paying attention to? We're paying attention to how high the F1 is, how high the F2 is, how high the F3 is, although as we talked about, the use of this is more complicated. Um, uh, and this helps us build our vowel system, figure out, figure out is there a difference between E and E, or between E and E, right? So, so we figure out where the targets are, and what are people trying to produce, and what are people actually producing, and if they produce that, how should I understand that, right? So this is how formants work. Um, now, formants are also useful um, in figuring out certain sorts of consonant contrasts. So in this, in this illustration, um, we have several different consonants coming before the vowel e, eh, right? So in all of these, it's e, eh, e, eh, e, eh, e, eh, right? So you can see the vowel is the same. The vowel is given in black here. The vowel is the same in each of these, but the consonant that comes before it is different. So in this one, we, this is what it looks like, right? It's quieter when it's blue. The blue part is quieter, and so it won't be quite as loud, but you'll still see a concentration sort of moving up toward that F2, right? So whenever you have a W, it moves up um, from a low F2 to a high F2. And the F1 also moves up a little bit here, right? Whenever you have a Y, you're moving from a high F2 to a lower F2. So yet, you move from a high to a low, and this moves from low to high. Um, let becomes more complicated. You really barely have, you have this tiny little extremely low F1, and you have a tiny little fall in the F2, but it only shows up right before the vowel starts, right? So this is L, L. It's much quieter consonant than Y. Um, and this is retch. So this is, if we leave out the ch, we have re, right? Um, and here we have quietness until right before it starts, and then this just grows and then these ones go up a little bit, right? So these are the type of um, changing signals that you're paying attention to as a child, learning how to say, oh, it's important whether someone's going ya or wa, that matters in my language, or it's important whether someone goes la or ra, um, that's important, that matters in my language. All right, so this has been our little lesson on form and frequencies. We have now finished the lesson on uh, phonetic variables that you are paying attention to as you're trying to learn your native language.